the animal loves us because they are so tapped in to Christ-like consciousness and unconditional love. Hello, passionate listeners and watchers. Welcome to Passion Harvest. I am Louisa, your host. Thank you so much for joining me wherever you are in the world right now. Our guest today is Coriel Kramer. She has the ability to speak with animals and are you ready to learn how? Animal communication expert Coriel Kramer has been connecting and speaking with animals since she was a child. Coriel has developed animal dynamics, identifying seven specific archetypes for animals, transforming animal communication. In her work, she addresses animal behavior, potential health issues, and uses her own brand of powerful energetic healing to encourage a deeper bond with animals and their owners. This is her story, and this is her passion. Coriel Kramer, welcome to Passion Harvest. Thank you very much, so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Um, well, you're the animal expert communicator. I've got a, I've got a lot of questions for you. I guess this is a really broad question, but how do you connect with animals on a on a deeper level? So, what I do as an animal communicator is I'm able to talk to animals exactly as I'm talking to you right now. I'm able to hear them, but it's a little bit more than that. I, I'm also empathic, so I get a sense for how they're feeling in their bodies. Um, when I open up a connection to them, it's like I'm flooded with all this information. I'm flooded with words that they're saying, sentences that they're saying. I'm flooded with the empathic feeling of how they're feeling in their body. I'm getting a sense for their personality. I'm also getting a sense for any, you know, any kind of like um, emotional issues they may be having. But I'm, I'm also getting images. I'm getting... Uh, I'm getting feelings, I'm getting emotions. So I get flooded with a lot of stuff. And when I say flooded, it's not a bad thing. It's mm -hmm. just something that just flows into me, all this information from the animals. So when I open up my connection to them, I use actually, I use your connection to your animals to be kind of like my gateway into your animals. So I connect to your energy through your energy. I then connect to the other beings that you, you, the fur kids is what I call them. I can't wait to dive into this, but that was kind of what I was thinking. Can you do the same with people? Obviously, yes. Yes, I, I also do work with people. I keep that as separate as possible because um, it's, it's a totally different kind of work that I yeah. do. I help people tap into their intuition in order to make their relationship with themselves and other people better. So that's what I do on the human end, on the people end, but it's still basically the same as what I do on the animal end. On the people end and the animal end, it's pretty much the same. It's just, I go about the inf giving the information differently. Yes, so it's so such a fantastic skill or gift. Um, and you, when you say tap in, I guess, mm -hmm. if you didn't not tap in, you'd be going crazy perhaps with all the animals that you're passing and walking through and dogs on the street. Um, mm -hmm. you kind mm -hmm. of must block that at some time. Yeah, I learned how to turn the switch on and off when it's when it's necessary so that I'm not inundated all the time. It took me a while to learn how and that I even had a switch and how to turn it off. But once I did, it makes life much easier because before I knew how to turn that switch on and off, it was pretty overwhelming. I mean, I would get stuff 24 seven, I would feel animals pain, I would feel people's pain, I would feel the world's pain, it just became really, really overwhelming. And, and really, it, it dragged me down, it, it became um, a very dark period in my life, I went through a lot of depression, because I didn't know how how, what do I do with all this information? How do I make the world a better place? How do I make myself a better person through this? So I had to go through my own gauntlet of fire before I came out on the other side. And can you, I mean, can you ask animals, I, I know you've worked with an incredible amount of animals. Can you ask them any specific questions that clients may come to you with issues and problems or Absolutely. to change behavior? Absolutely. That is probably about 75% 
Uh, the reason that I'm connecting to the animal to begin with is there might be some kind of unwanted behavior. There could be a physical issue. There could be uh, an emotional issue. Maybe they went through trauma or drama before they came to their person. So they're acting out or they're not integrating into their new forever home as, as easily as they should. Are they ready to let go of their their issues? Are they ready to feel better? Do they want to step back into well-being? Because I can't force anybody to do anything. I can give you information just like with people. I can give them information. But if the animal doesn't want to change, I, I can't force them to change and get better. So I need their support. I need their consent. And once I have that, which is a lot of the times. I can count on two fingers how many times I've had an animal say no. And then usually what it is is that I have to talk to them a little bit more. They need to really get a sense for who I am and then they feel comfortable and then they're ready to let go of their, their issues. But a lot of the times they're, they're yes, I wanna, I wanna feel better. You know, People have a tendency to wanna hang on to their stuff a little bit unless right. we go through extreme pain or we just can't take it anymore, or, you know, pain is the touchstone to spiritual awakening is there's a saying, um, but animals just really want to, a lot of the times they want to just feel better. Um, yeah. Great explanation. I've often heard, and gosh, I'm sure you have, but that animals behavior is a reflection of their, their owner or the, the person that cares for them. Mm -hmm. Is this not necessarily the case or? more than likely is? It depends on what's going on. It depends on the person. It depends on their animal. So <clears throat> what I've found is, is that a lot of the times the animals can stay in their pocket of well-being, in their stream or their river of well-being, which is flowing to every being on this planet, whether you're a human, whether you're a parrot, whether you're a gecko, or whether you're a dog or cat. It's always flowing to us. Well-being is always there for us to tap into and to flow with. Um, the animals are masters at that. But sometimes through living with us and, and going through what we're going through and wanting us to feel better and wanting to help us, they can kind of get caught up in our stream of disallowing of well-being. Mm -hmm. Um, and when that happens, they're trying to let us know, usually through their actions, whether they're going outside the litter box or they're all of a sudden attacking their owners or all of a sudden attacking another animal in the house or all of a sudden just, you know, wanting to be alone and away from their person. They're trying to let us know that we're too much and we need to get help. We need help um, in order for, for that. They're trying to be our indicators of our well-being or a disallowing of the well-being. Um, in essence, to well, part in part to change an animal's behavior, the owner potentially needs to make a change within themselves as well. That's why I love what I do, and that's exactly right. I what I do now is I don't necessarily, especially when there's unwanted behavior or physical issues going on with the animal. I don't work in single sessions because the work that I do, not only with the dynamics, which we'll talk more about, but mm -hmm. with the animal communication, with the healing intensive that I do to really and truly help the animals get back into their well being as quickly as possible. I also work with the person. What's going on with you? So I talk to the person, I find out what's going on with you. How is your life going? How's your career going? How's your, you know, relationships going? You know, what, what's going on behind here? Because in here is also might be, you know, fueling what's going on with your animal as well. So I take care of the whole unit. Everyone that's in that household, husband, wife, lover, brother, sister, baby, kids, doesn't matter. I take care of everybody because everybody is a factor into everybody, how everybody else is feeling and what everybody else is doing and expressing. Yeah, a holistic approach it makes sense when you think about it. Um, just for the audience, what are some of the interesting animals that you've worked with or communicated with? I've communicated with, um, I mean, to the list goes on and on, but I've communicated with wild animals such as hawks and eagles and owls. Uh, I've had 
incredible experiences with humpback whales. Uh, I've had experiences with uh, swimming with the dolphins. Um, I've worked with a bear in a zoo in, in New York City. I've worked with uh, snakes and lizards and uh, parrots and cats and horses. And I've learned so much from animals. I've learned from them about things that I never knew about. Um, things like reincarnation, things like uh, star children and star seeds, uh, things about, you know, uh, past lives. Now, I knew about this because I used to do a lot of psychic work, and I still do, of course, but not the same way. One animal that really comes to mind is this little chihuahua who had passed away. I was doing readings in upstate New York, and this woman comes in, and she was like, I want to talk to my baby. And I was like, absolutely, let's do it. I, I don't like knowing too much about, at that time, I didn't like knowing too much about what was going on. So I just said, just give me the name. You got a picture. Let me have a picture. So I looked at this little chihuahua and um, immediately I heard in my head, I come from the stars. And I was like, what? Huh? What does that mean? Yeah. And he, he just kept saying the same thing. I come from the stars. I am from I am starlight. And I was like, OK, how am I going to say this to this woman? So I did. I just said, you know something, it's not my it's not my job. My job is to just give the messages and leave it alone. So I told her, I said, I keep hearing the same thing from your, your baby. I keep hearing I am I come from the stars. I am from I am made from starlight. And she immediately starts crying, which is an indication to me I hit something. And she's sobbing. And after a few minutes, she says to me, we used to go sit outside um, and lay down on a blanket and he would lay on his back and look up at the stars and we would look at, each, at the stars from each other. Another interesting one was uh, a cat by the name of Naya who was attacking, literally attacking her owner. I mean, drawing blood. And if you know anything about cats, spites, they're very, very dangerous. I mean, they could send you to the hospital. So I found out this was one of the, the first clients I ever had doing um, the animal dynamics. And I applied the animal dynamics, the animal personality. I found out her personality was energetic. And Naya was getting wonked out by the people her person was hanging out with and spending time with. And once she started letting go of those connections to those people, immediately Naya stopped bothering her. She stopped attacking her. Uh, she clears her energy now. She cleared the energy of the house, which is something you should really do. I mean, if you clean your house, you need to cleanse your house energetically, periodically, once a month. And Naya immediately, I mean, the day she stopped seeing those people and clearing her energy from those people and clearing the house, she stopped attacking her. And you have to understand, Naya was attacking her every single day for months on end. So th there's been a lot of different animals that I've talked to. Some of the most interesting ones, I can go on and on and on and on, but we don't have that much time. Um, I just wanted to touch on something you spoke about before about reincarnation. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in your opinion, are animals... So, for example, a dog, is a dog reincarnated as a dog animal constantly or do they change sometimes to a human? How does that work? Um, I have found through being open and just trying to be as neutral as I possibly can, I have found that I've found animals, cats who have reincarnated into dogs. I've found horses that have reincarnated into cats. I've had people who have reincarnated into dogs, who have been animals and vice versa. It's, it's, there is no rules. Mm -hmm. You know, it's non-physical. It's heaven. It's whatever you want to call it, nirvana. There are no rules, you know. And also, you know, we all go to the same place. I wouldn't personally, I don't know about anybody else, but I personally, and I'm sure your listeners will believe the same. I don't want to go to back to non-physical heaven if there are no animal souls there. Why would I want to do that? That's boring, you know, and just hang out with people, human souls all day long. 
you know? So I think I've had animals reincarnate back and back and back and back into all different kinds of things. And interestingly enough, talking about reincarnation, what started happening around or about mm, 10 years into the beginning of the shift of consciousness, I used to do reincarnation of animals coming back to their people in this life, maybe once a year, maybe once every other year or something like that there. It was very rare. I lose count at how many I do now. Animals want to, they're, they're going out and wanting to come back within a certain time frame, back to their person in this life because they want to be a part of what we're going through as the shift of consciousness uh, for humanity. And they don't feel like their job with us is over yet. So I've had hundreds of animals who have reincarnated back to their people, bunnies and horses and dogs and cats and gerbils and hamsters. It doesn't matter. They're all coming back. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. And it's really fascinating because each one is a gem of a little story. Each one is amazing. Beautiful. So it's, it's lovely to think that certainly in whatever way out the animals choose us. Uh, just for those that maybe haven't had their same uh, pet or animal reincarnate, do we meet our animals when we transition into non-physical? Are they waiting there for us? Do we reconnect with them, our beloved pets? A lot of the times, many times, yes. Many times, yes. You, you have to understand, this is the way I understand it. This is the way I've been shown. So when we're down here in whatever body we're mm -hmm. in, there's also a part of our soul that is back in non-physical. It's just a little part, but it's still there because that's kind of how non-physical becomes more as opposed to having to wait until we transition and then non-physical or heaven becomes more. Heaven is, we're the playground down here. This is the playground. This is how through our experiences, good, bad, or interesting, Okay, we become more. And when we become more, our soul feels that back up in non-physical and they become more. Non-physical grows and expands and becomes better. Okay. Otherwise, if this didn't happen, it would take forever for non-physical to change. This is an instantaneous connection that's always there. So animals reincarnating us, you know, we're animals are reincarnating and then we're reincarnating. And then when we go back, our souls meet that peace, whether that animal is their full soul is up there or not a piece of their soul is. So that's what we, we, that's who's meeting us on the other side, either the full soul or a part of that soul, but it's still that soul of that being. That was a beautiful way to explain it. Just reminds me. I mean, animals offer us, such an opportunity for love there's well the many a lot of people um, they're just such a delight and joy i is agree that, is, they, that, they, is that one of the things love they, amazingly sorry. They sorry is that one of the things they encourage in humans more and a greater abundance of love absolutely this is why animals have this unconditional love People talk about how an animal, you know, an animal will love you no matter what, depending, of course, uh, if you can abuse that physically yes. and, you know, and figuratively. But um, the animal loves us because they are so tapped in to Christ-like consciousness and unconditional love. That's what's in their auric field. That's one of the levels that I heal when I do my five level healing. I heal the body, I heal the emotions, I heal the chakras, I heal the soul of any karmic gunk, and then I heal the auric field because it's like a filter. And what happens is, is that the energy comes in and flows out when it's ideal and healthy, it comes in and flows out. But sometimes what happens is the, the energy comes in and it kind of gets stuck in there and it becomes static and it becomes, um, it becomes not dead because you can't kill energy, but it becomes less uh, m moving. It becomes more slower. It becomes more uh, sluggish. 
Um, so when I clear the orc field, I've had animals who almost immediately who couldn't walk. And five minutes later, the woman, my client is sending me a picture of this dog running around the backyard. So this orc field is very, very important to the animals. And when it's clogged, it can mess them up physically, mentally, and emotionally. So, you know, that's there, they, they have that. They want to show us how to be that. And we have that too. We have an orc field. People take orc pictures of their aura. We have an orc field too. But see, it's us. It's our minds. Our minds are limitless, but we believe that it's limited because we put conditions on it. Oh, I can't do that unless I, this happens, or I can't be this person unless that happens, or I can't do, we put limits on ourselves. And so many, I've watched a few of your videos, Lisa, and there's so many people who talk about how you just let go. You, you let go of, of the impossible and the possible becomes, becomes when, when, and you let go of, and you just get into that flow of just allowing life to happen the way it's supposed to happen and just releasing that resistance. And when you release that resistance, you're going with the flow. And that's what it is, is that we're, as humans, we are constantly fighting because we have the free will. We're constantly fighting and questioning and doubting. And that's why it's so important to have a steady routine where you're connecting, meditating for a few minutes a day. It doesn't have to be hours, a few minutes. You connect, to, you, you, <clears throat> whether it's through, you know, using cards or or meditating, or just going out for a walk in nature, or being with an animal. You know, animals are great, as you said, they're great teachers of unconditional love. Look to your, you want to know how to love, really love? Look to your animal. <clears throat> so, so true. What, what do animals want from us? I think, and again, this is some other animal communicators might have a different experience. This is why animals, some animal communicators get one thing and other animal communicators get another thing. It depends on how they approach the situation. Through my experience, I believe animals want to walk with us side by side. We, we have to, we're on the cusp. And this is one of the things that this shift of consciousness is trying to get us to understand we need to stop seeing them as lonely beings and stupid. They want us walking with them. No, they don't want us being, you know, seeing them on a pedestal and then humanity is all the way down here because humanity is just garbage. It's, they don't want that either. They want us to step with them so that we can then see them as fellow beings and we can understand and gain the knowledge and the wisdom that they have and they in turn can get the knowledge and the wisdom and grow from what we're expanding into as well but if we see animals as less than we're, we're not helping the situation you're hurting the situation and the same is when and i tell people this all the time do not see animals as better than you okay because what happens is is that then that skews your your relationship with somebody. Think about how you put somebody on a pedestal. Mm. Oh, they're so great. They're so much better than me. Oh, they're better. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm garbage. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And that you're not hearing what that person has to share because you're thinking, oh, they're so, you're so enamored of them. So it's important to try to, that's what I try to do. I see this animal, whether I'm talking to a cat or an elephant, whether I'm talking to a horse or uh, a gerbil, it doesn't matter. I just see them and talk to them as I would talk to somebody else who I respect and as a fellow being. That's what they want. They want us to be able to let go and walk with them. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for that. That was a beautiful answer. For those that are watching or listening, what... If someone wants to really connect deeply with their animal aside from coming to see you, what's some simple tools or tips you can uh, advise for people to have a deeper communication with their animals? 
I think one of the biggest things, and I'm going to say a word that probably some people are going to think of as a bad word. It's not a curse word, but um, meditation. You want to, you don't want to use the word meditation, use the word quiet time. Okay. It's, it's quieting the mind enough and training the mind. And it's not about stopping thought. You have yogis that can't stop thought. Yogis themselves will tell you it's not about stopping thought. It's impossible. What it is about is it's about, there is a pause in between one thought going into the next thought. And it's about making that pause in between that those two thoughts or those thoughts longer. So it's a thought, pause, and then another thought. Oh, let's see if we can make it longer. There's a thought, pause, and then there's another. You make that pause as long as you possibly can because that's where the connection is. That's where the wisdom is. So if you can make yourself as quiet and open as you possibly can, then you can take that and sit with your animal. And when you talk to them, you just send them a very easy message. You don't go into it and say, Bobo, what's the meaning of life? You're not going to hear the answer. That's way too big. Okay. What's your favorite color? Where do you like to sit? Um, what, 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 what can I get you? What kind of toy would you like stuff that you're not really invested in the answer? You don't want to go for the jugular and say, especially if there's like a physical issue, what's the matter? What's what happened to you? Because you're, you're so scared that you're going to hear I am dying or something worse. You know, I got cancer or So you're invested in that answer. You want a question that you're not so much invested in so you can hear it and start slow. It's like a muscle. You know, you can't go to the gym and start, you know, getting those like 600 pound weights. You got to build up. You got to start with those one pound, the half pound weight sometimes because it's like a muscle, but the more you use it, the better you become. So that's what animals are looking for. That's how you can connect. You start easy, start in a, in a lovely, beautiful, sitting with your animal in the backyard, listening to the birds and you're just chilling. You say, Bobo, what's your favorite color? Oh, yellow. Okay. That's nice. That's good. You also try using um, the conversations. People do this a lot. Hi, Jasper, what do you want for dinner tonight? Oh, you want chicken? Okay, let's do chicken. How you want the chicken? You want the chicken on the side? You want the chicken in the middle? You want the chicken on the... And you answer for your animal. It's what I call the ventriloquist trick. Because again, you're, you're in that flow and you want that flow. You don't want to be thinking because the minute that you start thinking about it, your conscious mind is going to say to you, you are messed up. You need to get help. <laughs> You're talking to a cat. You're crazy. That's the conscious mind is coming in. So you want to get that conscious mind out and into the back of the bus. And you do that by getting into a flow as much as possible. Those are uh, some easy ways that you can talk to your end. Great, great tips. Just, uh, just a question. Would you, is it preferable to say it out loud when we're talking to our animal or could we do it in our mind? What would you recommend? It's easier in the beginning to do it out loud Mm -hmm. because that out loud quiets the conscious mind right because it's coming in so quickly that your conscious mind is going to be like what what what, what, uh, uh." it's not going to be able to keep up then later on i mean i can do i could sit there you know in my sessions and just talk to the animal in my head but it's going to be boring for that person Right. So I talk out loud. I let them know what I'm doing. I let, when I do my, my five level healing, when I find their dynamics, all that kind of stuff, I'm talking to my guides. I'm talking to the animal's body. I'm talking to the animal's personality itself, but it's still important for me to relay that. So that person feels like they're part of the conversation mm-hmm. because they are. What's just, I've got one more question that just came to me. What, what's your advice on sleeping with animals? 
Again, it depends. Okay. <laughs> this, my, my assistant is going to laugh at this one. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I love my animals. Love, 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 love them. Okay. They're amazing. However, okay. And this is their personality. One of them is a rule breaker. So he's an innovator. So he's always trying to figure out ways he can, you know, he's kind of like the MacGyver. Right. What I mean by that is, is that he's always thinking, how can I get this to work? How can I get her up? How can I make her pay attention to me? Um, and the other one is a sensory. So, you know, she's very, she loves her food. Now, usually what it is, is that my innovator rule breaker has figured out a way to uh, scratch at the at the box spring. And when he does that in such a way, he twangs it. He doesn't just scratch, he twang, he brings it back and he twangs it. He brings it back and he twangs it, okay? So he's smart, he's super smart. That's one of the things for the rule breaker. What it is, is that that goes through the box spring, into the mattress, into the pillow, into the earplugs that I wear and into my head. He's figured this out. Gosh. Now he usually does this around four to five o'clock in the morning. Okay. So what I found is, is that sometimes I will sleep with my animals, but sometimes I need my sleep. So I will leave them outside and close the door to the bedroom. Now, here's the interesting thing. At first I went through that pet guilt boy. I was like, oh man, they're going to hate me. They're going to open up that door. I felt, I feel great. I slept eight hours straight <laughs> the first time in months, you know? but I would open up the door and everybody's sleeping in their places. Nobody's stressed out. And I realized I'm tossing and turning because they're sleeping, you know, they're sleeping all over the place and I get warm and I also need, I toss and turn a lot. So I'm waking them up and these guys are now sleeping totally and completely fine without, they're not at the door scratching, looking at me, you know, like, ah. You know, they're sleeping and everybody's fine. So what I'm trying to say is it really depends on your situation, mm -hmm. but don't get into the guilt of if you do want to do it and you do want to sleep alone, give yourself permission to do that. And your animals will then feel that that permission you're giving yourself and they'll start to be okay about it. But it's okay to have some time to yourself and to say, you know something, I need sleep in order to do the work that I need to do that this universe is calling me to do. I need sleep. It's super important. And I can't always do that. And sometimes I want to sleep with my animals, but usually I close the door. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Coriel, I've asked all the questions. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the Passion Harvest audience? Well, the <clears throat> to go into a little bit of what each dynamic is in the mm -hmm. time that we have, sure. I think would be interesting for people. So the first one, and they, they're no particular order. It's just the way that it goes. So there's the guardian, mm -hmm. which is called the direct and demanding one. There's a lot of traits to them. I'm in the process of writing a book and I have it in what I call a compendium. And the compendium right now is at 50 pages. So um, a little bit about the direct and demanding is, one trait is they want what they want when they want it and they want it when they want it. So they can be very demanding. So a lot of animals who are direct and demanding might get one of the minus spectrums is, is that because they're so direct and demanding, people might want to tranquilize them because, or their vet says you need to tranquilize them. They're too stressed out when it's really truly just their personality. The sensory or the empathic archetype is very sensitive. They're the empathic. They get a sense for people and how they're feeling. They also get a sense for the energy in the house. So, you know, like I was talking about with Naya was attacking our person because of the energy yeah. in the house. What, if you have a sensory animal who's very sensitive and very sensitive to people and got a little bit of a stranger danger, you might want to get into a habit of clearing your house out every once in a while energetically with Palo Santo wood or with sage. Then you have the innovator, the rule breaker, like I talked about before, that's my orange ginger. Uh, they're very adventurous. They're very smart. 
they they're 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 they make you think outside the box so you might want to get toys that are inner innovator toys kind of like puzzles treat puzzles things like that there that keep them that challenge them because they don't like being bored mm -hmm. then you have the pacifist um and the pacifist um the the empathic one is the energetic and the pacifist is the sensory and that the sensory again like i said is about the senses so the sensory is about nose ears touch taste so you might want to just make sure if you think you have a sensory animal you just might want to make sure that you don't you, that you use more natural stuff especially when you're cleaning products with the floor and with the laundry and things like that there because they can be sensitive they can break out into rashes then you have the chameleon or the shifter the shifter you know it, the shifter is exciting you know, it, one day from one moment to the next, you might not know. You might, they're <laughs> shifting from one, you know, dynamic to another. So they make life really interesting, but you also need to know you have to have patience with the shifter. And then you have the transcendent. The transcendent, like I said, is the Zen master. They're all about connection. So they, they want to be connected to you. They're very tied to you. They're very tied. They're very Zen, like they're old souls. People who say, oh, my animals are all he's an old soul, you know, yes. Or a cat that acts like a horse or a horse that acts like a dog or something else like that. They're, that's usually a, an indicator that the transcendent, transcendents are great ones to, um, you know, kind of like sit with and be quiet with and, and see what they have to show you because they are the Zen masters. They are the, the, very wise like the innovator is is very innovative the rule breaker is very innovative um and they're very unique they love their uniqueness you know the the uh transcendent would want to sit with you and be with you and connect with you so that especially when you're connecting you know in meditation or something else like that there and you know they can also be the scruffers i mean what i mean by that is if you're not living your spiritual self, true self, they will be on you like stank on a skunk, <laughs> okay? And they will let you know it. And the latest one is the visionary and the visionary is kind of like the oracle. So animals that um, in nursing homes that go to a certain person and stay with them for hours and then that person suddenly transitions or that person that's laying on a woman's belly and she's not pregnant, but then all of a sudden, you know, the next day she takes a test and she is pregnant when she doesn't think she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. So they, they know what's happening. The, the animals who know when a tsunami comes before they come, the elephants and things like that there, some herds of elephants or some elephants know when tsunamis or hurricanes or tornadoes are coming days, weeks before they come, things like that there. And that's the visionary. And they're really cool. They're kind of like the Oracle. They know what's going to be happening. Or if they know that even before you're having a bad day, your animal's right with you and you're, you're fine. But then the next day you have a really crappy day and you're just emotionally all over the place. They're trying to help you and let you know, hey, you got to get yourself tuned up. And you got to make sure that you're going to be OK because you're going to have a rough day tomorrow. So they know things before they know them. So that's a little bit about each and every other dynamic. And there's a lot of more stuff. But that's what I love showing people because each one loves to be talked to interacted with, played with, and touched differently. And when I show that to you, I guarantee, guarantee it will make your your relationship with your animal even better. Well, I just love, I love, you know, I love that you shared that and it's, it's so insightful and big congratulations on categorizing those archetypes. That's incredible. Corel, thank you so much for being on Passion Harvest. It's been really insightful. Um, and so many people you. love animals and we're blessed to have them in our world. Well, thank you so much for, for allowing me and asking me on. And I want to thank your listeners and the people who will, the watchers and the viewers who will tune in. And uh, yeah, and if you need me, you just, it's really easy. It's my first name. Go to my website. It's my first name and my last name. So it's CorielKramer.com. Fantastic. And I will link, leave a link below in the show notes as well for people that are watching or listening just click on it thank you, thank you so much thank bye you bye. so much Louisa. <laughs>
Bye-bye. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. If you liked this episode, please do subscribe for weekly passionate inspirational interviews.